Now this is the third in the series, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. In the first two, we identified that the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We saw quite obviously that the Holy Spirit can be lied to, as with Ananias and Sapphira, and Peter made it clear. You have lied to God. You have lied to the Holy Spirit. We saw evidence that the Holy Spirit was involved in creation. We also saw, quite obvious, that the Holy Spirit has been involved right through the Bible, right through history. It's interesting that the Old Testament prophets and the folks, the people, were very aware of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, Then God said, Let us make man in our image. Well, who is he talking to? <laughs> well, of course, we are the ultimate creation of an infinite God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, a triune God. We are a triune being, body, soul, and spirit. There is no other creature created that is in the image of God. We are his finest creation. Animals are not body, soul, and spirit. Demonic spirits, angels are not body, soul, and spirit. We are. He said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And then he goes on to say, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and so on. God endowed us with intelligence with etern as a, and also as an eternal being. He created us to be in his image with an ultimate purpose in mind, that we would be with him forever. Now, we do not know what we shall be like. But we know when we see him, we shall be like him. And so we look forward with eager anticipation to the day when Jesus returns. And we know that we will be like him. Praise God. Praise God for this salvation that we hold dearly. Let us make man in our image. Jesus spoke of the Holy Spirit in Luke when he said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the, whole, in the city of Jerusalem until you are endured with power from on high. We know after the cross of Calvary, after the resurrection, that in John we see that Jesus breathed on the disciples. They received the Holy Spirit. They were born again. And uh, it's important to understand that salvation and the experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit are quite separate experiences in God. Now, salvation is the, the being born again. It is becoming a new creation. It is receiving the Holy Spirit. It's important to understand there is an operation of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in our lives. Jesus said, when you pray, pray, Father who art in heaven. Now, why would he do that? Well, you see, there is an order to how God relates to us for our purpose. When we are in heaven with him, there are many things we will not need. For example, as much as the Bible is the word of God to us today, when we are there, we will see him face to face. Hallelujah. And so, we will not need many of the things we need today because we will be there with him. And yet God in his infinite wisdom has given us this opportunity, this uh, relationship with him. I've often said we have a five pound brain. So how can we understand it all? And so we try to understand as best we can. I try to explain the Trinity in this way. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. A triune God. One times one times one equals one. And yet, even in these terms, he is still more infinite than any of our explanations can possibly uh, 
where, where we can possibly understand all of who God is. We do know, however, that he is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Father represents the throne of God, the authority of God. Jesus represents the salvation of God. And the Holy Spirit represents the ministry of God. Now, they all represent others as well, other areas of uh, relationship with us. However, when we pray, we pray our Father who art in heaven, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that enables us. It is the Holy Spirit's grace upon us. We know that Jesus operated by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would come upon him. We understand right throughout the Old Testament, Samson, the Holy Spirit came upon him. Elijah and Elisha, these men and women of, uh, of old, understood the Holy Spirit quite well. And so when Jesus spoke of the Holy Spirit, it was of no strange thing. They were, they understood. Now they did not understand what was about to occur. However, they were familiar with the Holy Spirit. Indeed, John spoke of the Holy Spirit. He said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now, we know that there is a timeline here. Jesus is born. He lives for 30 years. He commences his ministry for three and a bit years. He is then crucified. He is then resurrected. He then appears to the disciples many times and with many others saw him. He is then due for his ascension to, 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 uh, to ascend to the right hand of the Father, to be our intercessor, to be, to be our, as he already was, our propitiation, the covering of our sin. We know that he was the lamb uh, to the slaughter, literally. And yet now he would ascend to the right hand. The right hand is speaking of authority. The right hand of God. He said, all authority is given unto me. He laid it down for a time. And yet all authority had been given to him in heaven and on earth. Is the Father more important than Jesus or Jesus more important than the Holy Spirit? Definitely not. They are one God. One God expressed to us in three persons, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, an operational relationship toward us. Jesus speaks here of the Holy Spirit coming upon them. We know then they were already born again after the resurrection. Now they are told to wait. They are told to wait in Jerusalem. And uh, then, of course, we see that there are gifts of the Holy Spirit. And in Acts chapter 2, we read, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them dividing tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. In verse 14, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and heed my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in those last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs in the earth 
And so now we see the Holy Spirit has come upon these men and women of God who have waited as Jesus commanded them to do, to wait for this power from the Holy Spirit. He was already within them. Now they were to be endured with power from on high, that they would minister. And we saw earlier in my first two sessions that this was to be a greater witness for Jesus Christ that we as the church would be empowered, that men and women of God, irrespective of their knowledge, would be empowered with wisdom and gifts from the Holy Spirit to operate together. Now, the last days began with this dispensational time from the cross, the resurrection, and now we see this outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We are living and have been now in the last days. Now, I would suggest to you, if you're listening to this, you're watching this and you're thinking, I wonder if this is for me. Well, Paul speaks and teaches on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, in particular in Corinthians. He spoke of this and begins to say these words. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. In verse 1, which is not on the screen, he says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. I do not want you to be ignorant. Now, Paul at no point said that these gifts of the Holy Spirit would come to a conclusion when the disciples... Uh, went home to heaven. Indeed, uh, by now, it wasn't only the disciples. There were many thousands, not only born again, but also now baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, prophesying, working in words of knowledge and in wisdom. Now, we all know, as I taught earlier, that uh, we all receive faith in order to be saved. It's because of that gift of God that we understand and are able to receive Christ and able to receive the Holy Spirit into our life. And yet we see here that there is a gift of faith. We see here that there is the working of miracles. Well, can't all Christians work miracles? Well, let's remember it's Jesus who is the miracle worker. There's also Jesus that is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. Yes, of course. Uh, once you were born again and you have, you've given your life to Christ, you can pray, absolutely, and you should. You can pray for healing, you can pray for miracles, you can pray for a move of God in a family's life. However, these gifts are given unto the church for a specific purpose, and that is that the, perp the church would be effective. Now, the Corinthian church was very messy. You should read First and Second Corinthians to discover how messy that church really was. And Paul's, I mean, I think it was Paul loved the church very much. However, it was a headache to him. You know, they, they, I won't go into all of that, but it was a headache. Uh, they were operating in the gifts way outside the way God wanted them to operate in. And so he gives instruction. And we see here that there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Now, he's not wanting them to be ignorant. I would suggest to you that if Paul made such a point of not wanting them to be ignorant, he would make such a point to us today. And that the gifts of the Holy Spirit, this empowering of the Holy Spirit, this baptizing the Holy Spirit was for the last days, which commenced during Acts chapter two. Well, really it commenced at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so I believe this is very important. Paul saw it as important. He taught on it and says there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same spirit, the same God who works all in all. There you go. Spirit, God. All right. You see that? A Trinitarian statement. But the manifestation of the spirit, that is the Holy Spirit, is given to each one for the profit of all. And so we as the church, the body of Christ, are to be functioning for the profit of all, for the benefit of all. Uh, for to one is given the word of wisdom. Now you can imagine in the life of a church, 
particularly if it's a church where there is a lack of wisdom, <laughs> it would be very helpful to have somebody operating in a gift of wisdom that may not be because of their character or their good behavior. I mean, let me tell you again, as I said before, the gifts of the Holy Spirit by no means uh, are a measure of a person's maturity in God. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is. Now we read that in Galatians chapter 5, all right? And so the fruit of the Holy Spirit is a measure of a person's maturity in God. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are given by the grace of God. Right? There are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit, the benefit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the, through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit. To another, uh, what are you trying to tell me? That one person can have faith, but not everybody can have faith? No, 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 no. This is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit upon that person. In my earlier, uh, I think it was my second installment of this series, I spoke about a friend of mine who, 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 who saw a, a young boy, uh, I think it was a boy, I think it was a boy, drown, drowning in water. And, uh, you know, as he's running down the stairs, he's saying, God, I don't think I have enough faith for this. And the Holy Spirit supernaturally touched him and that boy lived. Uh, where are we up to here? Uh, for to one is given the word of wisdom through the same spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one as He wills. Now, it's interesting, it's as He wills, as the Holy Spirit wills. God will build His church. That's the point. And the, a, a gift of the Holy Spirit, as I said, is no measure of a person's character. But it is God who works these things for the benefit of the church. Now, you can imagine a church, a fully functioning church, working in all of these gifts. Wow. No wonder the early church grew. And now, of course, the church is worldwide. Now, I grew up really in the 70s, born in the 60s. But uh, my experience of this baptism in the Holy Spirit occurred during uh, the, uh, the, the uh, early 70s. And I saw a lot of wacky things. All right? I mentioned that in my, one of my earlier sessions. Uh, this was because, uh, look, uh, most, most of us didn't know. And I was just a young lad anyway. But it was exciting. It was thrilling. Uh, today, it bothers me. Some factions, as it were, do I use that word? of uh, Christendom, of the church, behave quite randomly, radically, and frighten, frighten people away. The Holy Spirit is not frightening, okay? The Holy Spirit will not scare you. This is a relationship with the Holy Spirit. It's a relationship with God. You know, I believe there are many people baptized in the Holy Spirit and they don't even know it. Uh, during the 70s, 80s, 90s, and until today, very often what we do is pray with someone. And we say, Lord Jesus, would you baptize my brother, my sister, and the Holy Spirit? We expect that there would be the evidence of speaking in tongues. Now, I'll teach on this in another installment where there is two operations of the gift of tongues. Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all. Right? He said that it is for the, um, uh, that, that tongues edified him. Now, what was that all about? That was where the Holy Spirit enables his spirit to speak in a language to God, unbeknownst to him. He said his mind was unfruitful. Now, it doesn't mean your mind is dumb. It doesn't mean you don't have control. It means it was his spirit. You see, we are spirit, aren't we? Right? We've got a body. We have a soul. And it's where we communicate with God in words unknown to our brain. And yet... We're able to communicate with God. It's a very spiritual experience, a very intimate experience with God himself. Jesus prayed that we would be one with him. We are his finest creation. He has endowed this for us. And I do believe there are many men and women of God and children 
who have given their life to Christ and are already baptized and are baptized in the Holy Spirit and they operate in various different gifts and they're not even aware of it. Uh, more often than not, it's the speaking in tongues that makes people go, ooh. Well, as I grew up, it wasn't like that. As I grew up, uh, the, we call it the Pentecostal church because of the day of Pentecost. Huh? And uh, we embrace this. And we saw this as quite natural. In fact, uh, we see here that Paul teaches the tongues are not a sign to the believer, but to the unbeliever. Isn't that interesting? Now, it's interesting because, look, the world has a lot of spiritual stuff going around. In the last 20 years, we've seen programs on television with people speaking to the dead, which is forbidden by God, I will also add. And uh, whether they are, whether or not, it's all camera crew and Hollywood, but you know, t television, I should say. But, you know, I don't know. But I know God forbids that. But we also see a lot of magical tricks these days. And some of the magic I've seen in the last 20 years, uh, I've had to question whether or not it's genuine uh, magic show, you know, illusion, or whether there's something behind it, uh, or whether it's just, you know, tricks of the television. I don't know. But I do know it's not only entertaining, but it's pulled a lot of people in to spiritual activity. Spiritualism is very large throughout the world today. Now, the church has something greater than all of that. All of that that the world offers is a counterfeit to the real thing. Now, when we give our life to Christ, he said that he would, that the promise of the Father, the, the Holy Spirit would come upon us. And not only would we receive him and he would be within us to mature us, to be more like Christ. And that's the operation of the Holy Spirit, to make us more like Christ. Uh, some people don't understand the Holy Spirit. Some people don't understand the Father. In my experience, most people tend to have an understanding of Jesus because uh, he was here, wasn't he? In flesh and blood, he was here. Fully man, yet fully God. And so we read about Jesus and we, we get to understand him. But Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus said of the Holy Spirit, I'll send you another. In other words, that's another of the same kind. He's the third person of the Trinity. All right. And so we have this one God moving through our lives. Right? Paul did not want people to be ignorant. As far as speaking in tongues, we will talk more about that in the next session. As far as the operation of these gifts, I've seen people argue. You know, for example, in churches, uh, Paul teaches later that there should be three messages in tongues or three prophetic words to try to bring order into the Corinthian church. They were going pretty random. In fact, probably similar experiences what we saw in the 70s. Right? But I'll tell you what, don't throw it out. Don't throw out uh, the moving and the gifts of the Holy Spirit in your life just because of people's behavior. Oh my goodness, don't do that. With grass grows weeds, all right? And people will take things to excess. If we understand the Holy Spirit, we'll understand that he moves mightily through the believer. Now, you may already be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And if you are, then uh, you already can speak in tongues. And so you're in a position to be able to say, Lord Jesus, I just want to talk to you now. We used to give instruction to people on how to do this. And to be frank with you, I, I look back with some embarrassment and how we operated with that. We'd get people to say, hallelujah, 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 you know, 20, 30 times until I tripped over their words. And then we go, oh, you're speaking in tongues. It was that sort of behavior that caused people to go, really? You know, this, this is a little bit more contrived than it is real. I remember my pastor as I grew, uh, I said to him, you know, I'm bothered by all that. And he agreed. Now, I needed to pray for two women, and uh, they wanted to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. They wanted to speak in other tongues. They also wanted these other gifts. Remembering all, always that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is that we may be a greater witness for Jesus Christ. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are particularly for the church. Do you understand that? But the power of the Holy Spirit is upon the believer. And we see here wisdom and all these other you know, words of knowledge, there are times where a, 
a, a Christian will just know something, they're baptized, they will just know something, not taught to them at all, and they will speak to a person and say, you know what, this is what I believe. And all of a sudden, you know, it's like, where did you get that knowledge from? Where did you get that wisdom from? Well, I prayed for these two women. And he, this is what my pastor said to me. He said, if God is going to do a miracle, let God do the miracle. Those words have stayed with me all my life. And so I did. I prayed for these two women. I, I thought, you know, what happens if it doesn't work? <laughs> How, what a silly thought. Well, I did pray for them and prayed that Jesus would baptize them in the Holy Spirit. They requested. You see, he said, Jesus said, if you ask for bread, I won't give you a stone. Right? If you ask for it. We've often said the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. Well, that's true too. Who won't force himself. He won't, you know, you, you receive salvation. You've, you're born again. You have eternal life. But why wouldn't you want all of this? Why, when Paul begins in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. Right? We, we don't want to be ignorant of these things. Well, I prayed for these two young women. Right? They're in their early 20s. And, and that Jesus would baptize them in the Holy Spirit. Well, I began to speak in other tongues. To my surprise, I didn't have to work it. I didn't have to get them to... It, it, it just happened. And we've often said to people, oh, just relax. You just, just, just let God do the miracle. However, you've got to let God do the miracle. You've got to let God have his way. You know what it is? It's a place of surrender. It really is a place of surrender. Now, we, the Pentecostal church over the years, have focused in on speaking in tongues. Now I've noticed that uh, some people have pulled away, you know, focusing in on the others. How about we have balance? That's a good word. It's a very, very good word that we might have the balance toward the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives. God loves you. God wants you to operate in these gifts. Now, I don't know what God wants you to operate in. Is it wisdom? Is it knowledge? Is it faith? Right? Is it healings? Imagine people, a church, a local church, embracing these gifts and you have one operating in the gifts of healing, another operating in words of knowledge, and one operating in gift of faith, right? You're going through a tough time. The church is going through a tough time, perhaps, but this person rises up in great faith. Uh, someone else uh, in prophecy. Now, these are for the building up, right? Now, the work of prophecy here is not a prophet, right? There is a fivefold ministry gifts to the church. Pastor, prophet, teacher, evangelist, apostle. They are the fivefold ministry gifts. This is not what Paul is teaching on here. The fivefold ministry gifts given unto the church are for the leadership, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry. These gifts here are also for the body of Christ, for the edification of all. However, it is for us to work together, just as I need my foot and my hand and my elbow right and we i work my whole body works together so god is causing us to work together for good now consider this pray about it pray to the father in the name of jesus by the power of the holy spirit and allow him to work with you talk to the holy spirit i had somebody once say you can't pray to the holy spirit well that's just silly of course you can talk and pray to the Holy Spirit. Of course you can. Now that's another teaching for another day where we speak of authority and uh, what, you know, something agreed on, some, some matter of great importance where you go to the Father in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. However, there is nothing stopping you. And in fact, I would encourage you to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Paul did. Many men and women of God right throughout history have. And uh, I can honestly tell you, I have a wonderful relationship with the Holy Spirit. He walks with me, he talks with me, I love him. And without him, I would not have, I, I would never have gone through. I would never have been able to overcome so many of the situations that have occurred in my life. So let me just pray with you right now. Receive this, be open to Jesus. Okay, if you're open to Jesus, then you have nothing to fear. All right, I'm conscious that some people get afraid. Once again, don't be afraid of the Holy Spirit. Don't be afraid of God. Okay? And uh, just trust in the Lord with all your heart. Bow your head with me 
and pray. Father God, we love you. We thank you that you are God. You are Lord. You, Lord Jesus, you, you are the beginning and the end, the A and the Z. The be- Lord, you, you are faithful to us. We thank you that the Holy Spirit is with us. With us, We thank you, Holy Spirit, for the work that you do in our lives. And I pray now that we all together might grow and mature, that we be more like Christ to the glory and honour of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.